morning, Facebook. Hope you are all well. I have, um, I've been working these COVID times. These COVID times have uh, given me some time to kind of reflect on things and think about things. And, and uh, one of the things that I was reflecting on is my mission statement. I have a mission statement that I prepared back did 30 years ago and it's been good and i know it from memory and i put it actually in a video saying hey here's my mission and in doing that in thinking about it more i i found there's ways that i i thought it was deficient that i could make it better not saying it was bad that i had it for decades and it worked pretty well so if anybody's interested in that i can certainly share that one but now through this time and kind of reflecting on uh on basically life in general and having the time to do that i kind of have some new thoughts that i want to um to share that so a new mission statement and i want to share that with you and so why i was questioning myself why do i want to share this mission statement with you why does that matter so here's why i think one it might be something of value to you that you can take and that you can change and make your own make it something more acceptable to you and more in line in being than unique you that you are that you get it the way that it works for you the second thing is that part of this i've embedded in my mission statement about reducing adverse childhood experiences or supporting optimal childhood experiences let's put it that way and i and i can explain why that's the case but i'm looking for people to partner with me on that things people that want to make a difference in that 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 area that part of aspect of life so that's what i'm hoping for and then the third thing is that this revised mission is going to kind of uh, direct some of my future activities in that some volunteer work that i do that doesn't align with this mission i'm going to try and find somebody else to do those roles so that's kind of my plan so my mission statement for now and go forward uh and i figure i got like a good 20 years of good health that i can contribute pretty solidly to this maybe more maybe more but this is it i am and aspire to be my favorite human being to be my favorite human being i will make my choices as healthy as possible to be my favorite human being means that i will strive to be the best husband i can be a support for my daughter caitlin nicole friesen phd candidate a caring friend an asset to the health of my clients and their employees and a value to my community so those are i i want the rest of my life to be the best of my life i will focus on reducing adverse childhood experiences slash supporting optimal childhood experience this focus will help individuals and will help maximize my contribution to the community so that's my mission statement now a couple things that you might when I wrote it, I thought, oh, that sounds a little odd. And the one part is about, I am my favorite human being. That sounds maybe on the first blush a little egotistical. Ooh, this guy is his favorite human being. But if you think about it, it's not a judgment thing. It's not saying better or worse. It's saying favorite. If your favorite ice cream was chocolate, that doesn't mean that vanilla and Rocky Road and Neapolitan are bad. They're just different so if your favorite is that you choose that as your favorite now i have been doing this a while and what i find is this if you decide that you are your favorite human being and that's all it takes a decision you are your favorite human being your self-talk becomes becomes considerably sweeter you're more encouraging more yeah you can do this you know go forward bravely don't worry you know those kind of things you can relax and focus more on on what difference you want to make and the i uh, and the part where i added in about aspire to be here's how i'm envisioning that i am my favorite human being period full stop that's good i'm happy with 
I'm I'm my favorite. I'm happy with who I am. That's all good. I am me and I'm that's all right. So now aspire to be means that means I can certainly improve still. So how can I improve? And then as I aspire to be in these roles, if I fulfill these roles the way that I'm planning on, then that is how I become an even better human being. So that's kind of my thought process. So it's not a judgment thing. It's just taking who you are, saying I'm my favorite. Do I want my favorite to be, uh, to have a good life ahead of him or her? Yeah. Well, how do I do that? Well, take care of yourself first, right? So that you have the capacity to give. So you have to do those things, make those choices, and then pick your spots where you can contribute, right? Pick the things that you have some kind of influence or can make some sort of difference. In the focus of, I've been doing a lot of research on the adverse childhood experiences, and this is by no means a new thing. But here's basically how this works. If you have children that are neglected or abused, they are, what's the term for it? Fail to flourish. And fail to flourish means they're living every day in like a high stress type of, of environment. They're, they're always, uh, what they're either disassociating or hyper hyper aroused that's it but aroused in a uh, an emotional sense so there's those things that occur when they've when they're abused or neglected and that what that means is they go to school they can't learn they can't focus well this becomes a problem they can't learn they can't communicate well with others and then as they go through uh, get, go through their life well it doesn't get any better if they don't solve whatever those stresses are and the ACEs, by the way, there's 10 things that are identified as ACEs, and they're horrendous things that children should never have to experience, right? That the death of a parent, seeing their parent get uh, 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 arrested, see, pardon me, seeing their parent get arrested, or their parent just leave, abandon them, or, or they are beaten or raped by a parent or an adult. Uh, they see their, their mother beaten or raped, That those kind of situations. So they're very, very severe type things and if we find ways to reduce the frequency reduce how many times that the the frequency the intensity the impacts of those adverse childhood experiences here's what we will find those kids will flourish those kids will have better lives so they'll have better health they'll have the capacity to be a better parent they'll have the capacity to be a better person they'll have a capacity to enjoy their life fully they'll live longer and they'll live more satisfying lives the converse if we do nothing and that's what has happened in a lot there's efforts but not enough uh what has happened is then people don't get the help they need and that's that's just goes down and down and down just gets worse and worse and then leads often to addiction and then because the addiction is some way to temporarily escape a really bad circumstance so there's those things and then that could lead to crime as well early death for sure bad health all those kind of things so if we can make a difference in kids lives today they'll have better lives immediately like right now and long term if that influences the path of their life go forward they're going to have better lives for the rest of their life perhaps now that's exciting now think of it from a societal perspective what happens to our community where we have more people who are healthy happy productive type folks what happens where our society our communities get a lot safer or communities get a lot more uh, uh, interested in making things better and improving things so i think there's a short-term immediate impact and then there's a long-term uh, more general impact that benefits everyone so there's my mission statement for 2020. If this, if any part of this you want to participate in, you want to help me to uh, uh, specifically with reducing adverse childhood experiences or supporting optimal childhood experiences, if that's something that resonates with you and you want to make a difference in that area, uh, I want to work with you. So contact me. Uh, my cell phone number is 587-220-8840. 587-220-8840. So you can text me or call me. And uh, uh, if we can make a difference there together, that would be awesome. Thank you. Uh, oh, man, that was 10 minutes. All right. Well, that's how long it was. Thanks much. See ya.